What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my page, then welcome. Hopefully you enjoy this video and my previous videos enough that you'll now be a subscriber. If you're a returning subscriber, then thanks for the support. So I've had my Stage 6 Icon lift, uh, lift and suspension installed for two weeks now. So I've got to go back down to Go Big Chuck Performance in Ventura and get the retort done. I'm also going to ask a few questions to help reduce the rubbing because I'm rubbing very bad in the, on the front fender and I think I'm rubbing on the pinch weld back by the cap mount, which they did do a cap mount chop. And there's a little bit of black that's on the pinch weld, like more towards the bottom. I haven't inspected enough to know if it's my tire um, rubbing on it or if that's just overspray from the from them spray painting the cap mount. So I got to see that a little bit more. Um, I'm thinking of having them raise the height of my lift. I'm at about two inches right now, so I go another three quarters of an inch, see if that'll help. However, that might reduce some comfort in the suspension, things like that. So I'll ask questions about that. Also possibility for a Viper cut. If you don't know what a Viper cut is, it's basically a front bumper cut where you can do it on your own. You kind of just cut it and it turns into like a, I don't know, I guess it looks like a Viper is what people say. It does look pretty nice. Um, so I'm considering that, which will give more height and wheel clearance. There's also the potential for a full uh, bumper cut and getting an aftermarket, either steel or aluminum bumper, which that is a lot of money and I'm not ready to do that right now just because this Icon lift was very expensive. So I'm gonna ask about that. I've also heard that with a pinch weld, you can use a hammer and kind of knock it to where it's flush, or I guess hammer it down to where it's flush which I don't know if that'll mess up my warranty that I have on the truck. So I'll have to have to uh, ask some questions about that and see what they say. All right, just filled the truck up, 353 a gallon. See what the uh, miles, 257 miles. And I got 233 on the last full tank. And that was about 99% freeway driving. You guys didn't get a chance to check out my video where I basically run my truck from a full tank down to empty and I want to see how many miles I can get. That's down in the description below. It's about two videos uh, back. So in that video, I asked people to tell me what they get or what their uh, gas prices are in the cities that they live in. And the person with the highest gas prices was living in Guam. I think it was upwards of $4.60 a gallon, which is insane even living in Santa Barbara. That's crazy. And then the person with the lowest gas prices shocked me even more. So apparently in central Texas, it's $1.83 a gallon. I mean, I can't even remember the last time gas in California was under two bucks. So props to you for living in Texas and your gas being $1.83. I think my truck would cost like 35 bucks to fill up. That would be amazing. However, I'm in California. I won't be leaving California, so I can't complain too much, right? All right, I just got the retorque done. I'm gonna show you guys. Hopefully you can see uh, right here, there is definitely some rubbing. Try to get in there. You can see right there. Here's the pinch weld. You can see the black on it, which I don't know if it's from the tires yet. A Little bit right here as well. So I might consider knocking or hammering that back a little bit. Cab mount is definitely chopped back enough. No issue there. And then in the front, can see a little it right there a little bit of rubbing and then there's nowhere else on this side so those areas and then if I come over to the passenger side there is no rubbing on the on the pinch weld it looks like really even none on this back area and just a tiny bit up in here so nothing too significant on the passenger side. Looks like it's mainly the driver's side. So one thing that I didn't realize right away up until now is my tires being mud terrain, the tread on them is going to be a lot more, I guess you could say taller than the tread on an on a all-terrain tire. So for instance, KO2s. So that right there alone is going to give me rubbing that may not happen on all-terrain tires. So if you're thinking of getting 285s and you're going with KO2s, you might not get the rubbing that I'm getting with the mud trains that I have. That's one thing I didn't keep in mind or that I didn't consider until they told me right now. Um, I was talking to them about my different options on what to do and he said give it some time and see if the rubbing goes away in the front. Once those mud trains wear down a tad bit more, they're gonna 
you're gonna have that more clearance and you won't have the rubbing in the uh, on the front wheel well area so that's something that I guess I can wait for however I'm still considering a Viper cut and I also had mentioned increasing the height which some is something you can do they're they're not against it they just mentioned that when they set the the height for the suspension it's at the perfect droop so when your tires off the ground that distance from the tire to the fender when your tire hangs out is going to be your droop now if you increase the height of the suspension you're extending the coilovers and then when you're at full droop you are you can possibly overextend the coilover which is something you don't want to do so in terms of the height i'll probably just leave it exactly what it's at um, it's around two inches like i've said before lastly before i end this video if you guys have done a viper cut or helped do a viper cut let me know what worked for you and what didn't um, what tips you might have for me and if you have an aftermarket front bumper let me know if you have aluminum or steel why you choose the one you did and uh, if you installed it on your own that's something that i would like to do on my own um, I have no idea how to do it, but I'm sure I can learn. So definitely comment down below on the Viper Cut, pros and cons, what helped, what didn't help, and what aftermarket bumper you have and why you chose it. I'd appreciate it. And until then, we'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.